uh, it is a great occasion where uh, uh, Rudra Yadna, what is this Atiruddha? Maharudra Maha, Maha Yadna is being done, which is chanting of uh, Namakam 1331 times and uh, Chamakam 121 times uh, with the many rhythmics, parts fading and chanting. I will tell you the science of mantra, how it works. See, mantra is a frequency, okay, it is a frequency of operation. See, each mantra is a frequency. Now, when I say something, somebody in that room can hear the distance because power is only this much. But if I speak to a radio transmitter, it can go to some miles. Transmission distance is more. Power of the mantra gets magnified by with what power you speak. It's not how loud you speak. The power of speaking the mantra that is important. Okay. So, mantra has a power associated with that. The power is associated with the person who is speaking it, his consciousness. Consciousness gives the power. How it does? Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa used to say, it does not matter what you say, who says matters. Suppose in your street you go and say, what a dirty street, nothing will happen after 10 years also. But suppose a prime minister comes, he just looks at this, street is dirty, it is all over, the street will be decorated next day. Who speaks, what makes a difference? Any words which is coming out of the mouth of an evolved being has more impact on the nature, individual and the society. So, the, your being matters. Understand? What you are makes a difference when you speak. Understand? I have an example. In my childhood, we used to go to a doctor. There used to be two doctors nearby, two, two shops. If one doctor we go, they will be all dull, no patients will be there. Okay, nobody will be there. Next doctor you go, it will be overflowing with the patients. You have to wait in the queue. You go to this doctor, he gives the same medicine, go to that doctor, he gives the same medicine. This medicine is not different. But some of that doctor, people are more. Okay. And this doctor who is here he is from our own community, our own known people. We skip him and go to this guy. Okay. We wait in a queue. Here you don't have to wait in a queue. What makes a difference is the being of the doctor. What he gives is same. This doctor and this guy doctor gives same. But who gives makes a difference? And what is the consciousness which makes a difference? Same medicine will heal you better. So I have come to a conclusion. Healing happens because of the consciousness of the doctor. Medicine is just a instrument. As a doctor, you may not agree. But <laughs> that, that, that is to an extent it is true. Uh, you are saying you are putting a class to an extent. I will say it is true. <laughs> okay. So, this is what I have, uh, uh, what my conclusion is. This is my childhood observation. What happens is, any words, this mantra or any word, depends on the consciousness from where it is coming from. So, now, there is a lower level consciousness and a higher level consciousness. And I speak of consciousness which is operating in the world. The lowest level consciousness comes with the lower level vibrations, frequency. Okay. The frequency, lower level consciousness is closer to material frequency, matter frequency. The higher level consciousness is closer to spiritual frequency. Higher is the frequency, more is the power, more is the impact. Okay. So, where which frequency you speak will show you where you are. The frequency and power goes together. Highest frequency is silence. Okay. Silence is the highest frequency and earthly frequency is lower frequency. Earthly. So, you can say uh, in the rainbow, colors are there. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. Okay. 
violet is the higher frequency, red is the low, lowest frequency, right. So that is why our ancestors said Ganesha is closer to earth, that is why Ganesha is always given a red flower, okay. Krishna is the highest frequency, higher frequency, Krishna is the Neela Mega Shama, violet. So the violet, yellow, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange represents where the devatas are fitting in that frequency scale, in the consciousness scale. So similarly, frequency is different at different levels. Now a lower level, lower level frequency typically associated with the negativity, anger, fear, anxiety, what we call as uh, uh, negative emotions. When there is negative emotion, the consciousness shrinks, you feel you are limited. The more you are shrinking, the more your power comes out, okay. Higher frequency, this is expansion, okay. When there is expansion, the power of the same words will have the impl impact on the universe, depending on what stage it is. So highest frequency is enlightened being, where is that we can call it as total stillness, one with Brahman. So the words and thoughts are the words and th thought of that being will impact a larger whole in that sense. So this is the principle, frequency of individual goes with the power of the words they speak. So we all these mantras, Veda mantras, chanting, what they did, when they did, when they did Veda mantras and chanting, what is found is there is a mantras have the power. This power of mantra they call as matrika shakti. Okay. The words have the power to create a reality in our, our life or they, they have the ability to change our reality in our life. Okay. Any word which you speak will have impact us in some way. Right? Words will impact us very severely, our consciousness. So the power of the word is called Matrika Shakti. The power of the word to uplift us is called Mantra Shakti. Matrika Shakti is Mantra Shakti. Matrika Shakti is also related to Maya Shakti. You can see that the, the way the root words, Ma, Ma, Ma. Matrika Shakti, Maya Shakti, Mantra Shakti. All come from Ma. So all our root words are Ma. They come from the what we call as power inherent in words and words are coming from Bijakshara. Bijakshara means root words. So each, each element in nature, the five elements, Panchabhutas, Prati Tattva, Jala Tattva, Vayu Tattva, Akasha Tattva, Prati uh, all these five elements, space, wind, fire, water and earth, they are a root Bijakshara are there. So that is called Bija Mantra. Okay. So these Bija Mantras have the power to unlock the energy in the matter. Just like nuclear scientists, when they break the atom, energy is released. Okay. What they are doing is at subatomic particle, they will break it, energy is released. So Bija Mantras have the ability to break the matter and go to the root of the matter and release the energy. Okay. So now, Difference between the nuclear scientist and a spiritual scientist called Rushis is material scientists are able to unlock the matter and release nuclear energy. Whereas spiritual scientists are able to not only release to unlock nuclear energy, they are able to release consciousness energy also. That is why if you listen to Mahabharata and Ramayana, they are very powerful weapons are used. They are called Astras and Shastras. Difference between Astra and Shastra is a ordinary weapon made out of metal, okay, physical thing belongs to cash category of astra. So, where you associate a mantra with that, power of the words associated with that is called become shastra, or it may be other way. I may be right. So, now what happens, shastra? It may be other way also, astra and shastra. So, basically, what happens? When you utter a specific word in a specific way, mantra in a specific way, you are releasing the energy inherent in nature, prakriti. So the same one blade of grass can become a brahmastra, which can destroy the weapon, destroy the entire universe. It is equal to nuclear weapon. So that is where 
if you read, read mahabharata the description of weapons is much more powerful much more stronger than the nuclear weapon we are using today and they are much more directed okay it is like uh, guided by the specific mantra it can be precise i mean in today's world we can say it's like artificial intelligence program it can go and hit the right target very precisely so these are coming from the words of power now words of power comes from the level of consciousness you have it can't come just like that and the consciousness is related to your frequency of operation the higher the frequency of operation higher is the consciousness so that's why what you say does not matter who says matter who says makes a difference because when he says something the power of the words will change the environment okay so the more silent you are the deeper you silent you are the deeper more is the power this is the principle okay and each bija mantra has a specific power to inha and uh, activate certain aspects of nature each bija mantra this is the overall situation okay now take mantra like rudra mantra or any other mantra rudram it is heard it is said that rudram comes in uh, uh shukla yajurveda okay rudram and chamakam so what is said that all other mantras you have to chant veda every day rudram and chamakam even if you chant one once one one time that will change bring lot of changes in your life so so many benefits are told putra sampatti uh, children wealth power position health so many benefits are told now the question is is it these benefits are told as a promise it is just a general uh, what i am saying motivator or they are real if they are real how does a mantra operate in my understanding this mantras are a coded sequence i don't know how they how can it be decoded but is a coded sequence the coded sequence activates our nervous system in a specific way okay because ultimately our nervous system responds to words and it also activates certain aspects of our dna okay by activating our nervous system in some dna we are bringing about the changes in the personality the life you are bringing sharper memory or more clarity more peace into the life of the person in that sense material benefit so the external benefits are there you will have victory in the kingdom okay or you will have a lot of money what i call as benefit in the outer world so these are all because the mantras have the power to attract and change certain things at the deeper level of consciousness now the ability to change affect that change depends on the level of the consciousness of the person who is speaking of so that's where these people who study the mantra or chant the mantra what we call as so called uh, um, rectics their lifestyle was a very strict way of living very i mean it is a very stringent uh, requirements are put on their way of living okay so that their consciousness is at a higher level when they chant that was supposed to be the reason no no okay so the ability to chant the mantra with specific consciousness is what is the training of all rituals they live in gurukula they eat food in certain way they live in certain lifestyle so that they are living in a higher consciousness when they utter the mantra that have impact on the environment and the person and on the society so the in chamakam lot of number system is there ek chame dve chame tri chame like that uh, chame 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 number systems are used why after more than 10000 years 2000 year uh, 3000 years they are using the number systems so the numbers are all some coded sequence actually so they are related to a sort of dna sequencing dna coding a cosmic code is hidden in that it we don't know and we don't have idea to uncover it as of today but what happens is brings a changes in the personality changes in the environment 
and how do we rise in the higher frequency? The lower frequencies of nature are earthly frequencies or rather frequencies closer to negativity, fear, anxiety. I would call this as a, see this frequency map, right? This is one scientist has mapped. These are lower frequencies, shame, guilt, apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger. Somewhere in between we are, we are there, human beings. These are called asurik, these are called asuras. These were human beings and these are called devatas. And higher frequency where more consciousness expanded, they are called enlightened beings or rushis or sadgurus. So this is actually a miserable condition. So now, if you are able to shift at this frequency level, whatever we utter will have a higher impact. Okay, that is the secret of Rithik's lifestyle, that is the secret of mantra. Okay, so now how you can go in higher scale is two things are required for that. Mind has to be made progressively calmer, mind has to be progressively calm, nervous system has to calm down. Okay. And when your nervous system is calmed down, you are able to tune to higher frequency. Okay. When you are able to, you are able to operate at higher frequencies. And that is called Devatas. And highest level is called Sadguru. Okay. That is the functioning. Have you heard of one scientist called uh, Dr. Sheldrake? Dr. Sheldrake. He did a research called a Morphological Field. Have you heard of Morphological Field? See what happened is, uh, he said all living beings, are, beings live in a biological field, a field of biology. Okay, what I call I call I call it biological field. So all the living beings are tuned to a specific biological field. So far he did an experiment on rats. Rats are kept in a cage and given a maze. If you solve the maze, he gives a reward, some food. So what he found is, rats kept in one, one place influence the behavior of the rats kept in somewhere else, far away in other country. Somewhere the information of learning of the maze he in this rat influenced the learning in the other rat. So information was getting transmitted from here to there. And what field? There is no wireless, nothing. Understand? So information is getting transmitted. So this field he called as morphological field. All species of living beings operate in morphology. A dog should operate in dog morphological field. Human beings operate in human being morphological field. I mean, you, to for your for your purpose of understanding, I compare this morphological field like a wireless. Okay. So for example, you call from America. Here, people here. How does the information travel there? There is a field of wireless. <coughs> information travels on the field of wireless. Understand? So, uh, morphology field is compared to a consciousness field, field of consciousness, which is there. All living beings share that consciousness field, and information gets uploaded and downloaded into the consciousness field. Okay, this is the research of Dr. Sheldon. Not many scientists agreed with him, but he is on the right track. Okay. So now what is the importance of this is okay, let us say you go to in a city of America, you go to your town. Suddenly you feel the people's behavior is one pattern. You go to next town, the people's behavior is different pattern. Why? They are in different marital field. They are plugged into different marital field. In Karnataka, in India, Karnataka you go to people, this thing, you see a behavior suddenly. The moment you cross into Andhra border, suddenly behavior changes. So, all of them are tuned to a morphology field. Okay. <laughs> I will give you an analogy to you. <coughs> analogy is, uh, which you can understand. This field is consciousness everywhere. No science can measure it. Information gets travelled in the field and travels faster than light. So, Einstein said nothing can travel faster than light. Right? Was he right? No. So now scientists have come to say understanding that Einstein's theory of faster than light is false. Nothing can travel faster than light. What they have found is that if you give a spin to one electron here, <coughs> irrespective of the distance, millions of light years away, another electron can get a spin. 
that means what is called entanglement, quantum entanglement. Okay, time and space doesn't matter. Einstein's theory of light being the fastest is false. This is the Nobel Prize uh, research I'm speaking of. Okay, so that means something can travel faster than light. And what is the medium? There's no medium. The medium is consciousness. And what can travel faster than light is the information in that. Okay, so these are called morphological fields. So now let us say I am saying you go to a city like uh, Silicon Valley, all the people will be thinking of electronics, electronics and uh, innovation, right? Why? Because they are tuned to the morphological field of electronics. Understand? And have you heard of this? When any, when any, any, uh, when, I don't know whether you have gone to any venture capitalists. Have you, have you met? You are, you are venture capitalist? <laughs> I have interacted with many venture capitalists. So, there are thumb rule of evaluating a new idea. Thumb rule of idea evaluating new ideas. If somebody, people will come with brilliant, crazy ideas. The thumb rule is if somebody comes with a very brilliant idea, crazy idea, at least seven people in the earth, somewhere they will be coming out of the same idea. Otherwise, the idea is not, the time has not come. Seven people in different parts of the world will, they may not be successful, but seven people will come out with that idea in different way. So that means the idea gets communicated in the field somewhere. <coughs> okay. Now the question is, can we tune to this field, higher field, right? Yeah. So can we download and upload data from that field? In fact, we are always tuned to that field. We are always tuned to that field. We are always living in that field, right? And that field in our Vedantic language is called Ishwara. Okay. Now let me ask you, where are your memories stored? Where are your memories stored? Just show me the point where your memory is stored in stored in part which part of the body. You are a doctor. Show me where the memories are stored. Show me. The memories are stored in the field. <laughs> and our nervous system is uploading and downloading data from the field. It's an instrument. It's an instrument of uploading and downloading. It's not that's why after death of the body, you can go to another, another body because information is not in the body. Information is accessed through the body, but information is not in the body. In our, your human body is nothing but a sophisticated computer, equivalent of computer, uploading and downloading data from the net. And that net I call as the inner net. Just like internet, counterpart of inner net. Okay? Understand? So now, the technology is. Can you get into internet? There are various fields here, various morphology fields are there, some devata fields are there, some asura fields are there, some sadguru fields are there. Can you get in there and get out? <laughs> now the question is which field are you operating? Uh, which field? And that depends on your frequency. The frequency of operation allows you onto that particular field only, it doesn't allow you into other field. There's a locking mechanism. Understand? So this locking mechanism, unlocking has to be done. Unlocking has to be done, somebody in the other field, the higher field, has to allow you their password. <laughs> okay, like admin. Without admin, you cannot get a login to the field. So, that somebody who in the higher field allowing you is called initiation by the Guru, Mantra Diksha. So, if he is in that field, he knows the field and he allows you into that. Others, you don't, you are locked into the field. You are not locked into, you are locked into lower field. Understand? And once you are into that field, <laughs> you are constantly able to upload and download data from that field. Just like you are uploading data and download data from the computer. Okay? So now, any mantras, whether it's Ragveda mantra or this thing, has to be initiated by the person who is in that frequency, that field of operation. So these are called devatas. Sadhguru. Okay? So they will allow you, unlock that field for you, then you can be constantly connected. Right now also you are constantly connected. You are constantly connected to what you call as a lower frequency. Field. So higher frequency. So to go to higher frequency, first of all you should be eligible. That's why Sadhgurus will not initiate, Guru or Gurus will not initiate the mantra to anybody. Because that mantra will be used useless. Your frequency, you don't agree. Like for example, uh, I have a Bluetooth. Uh, Bluetooth. It is a second generation Bluetooth. It will not plug into third generation Bluetooth. I have internet, 50 Mbps. Port will not plug into 100, 1 gigabit. So, the, your, your ability has to increase. 
that ability to increase the Sadhguru or realized master will give a lot of uh, activities for the people, service activities to purify, raise the vibration. So that you can get into that field. Then the Mantra Diksha is given. Mantra Diksha is a process by which you can, you are allowed to go inside that field. Then once you are allowed to go inside, you can upload and download data in and out of that, just like just like your day to day. So now at that field, when you are in that field, chanting of the mantra will have that power associated with it, that power of devata. So this is the science of mantra. With my limited knowledge, whatever I have understood is this much. <laughs> so our nervous system has certain ports by which you can connect. Our midbrain, our pineal gland is there. So that pineal gland has certain ability to receive high, operate higher frequency. Most of our pineal glands, you know, human beings, is de unfunctional, de functional, because it's calcinated. Okay. So I'll show you. I have one uh, student who has operated midbrain and her fantastic supernatural powers I'll show you. I have uh, videos. Okay. On the midbrain, that part gets activated. Lot of unpowers get unlocked. So this is like you can think that our pineal gland or midbrain is like a port connected to higher level consciousness. Or Sahasrara, the Tabadvari. So these are more of a ports which can connect us to higher consciousness. Thank you.